On the Thomas Gold Fighthype.com here with Steven, Breadman Edwards. How you feeling today, man? Good, man. Heading on to do my daily routine right now. All right, love to hear it, man. You know, gotta um gotta jump into it, man. Before you even um, you know, kind of break down what happened with the whole like Fury and Ganu thing, um, like beforehand, before the fight happened, like how did you think it was gonna play out, man? You know what, man? I don't want to act like, you know, I was a genius or anything like that. I didn't even think about the fight, to be honest with you. <laughs> I ain't going to come on here and act like I knew that God knows was going to do that. It really wasn't even something I really thought about. Like, I'm not real a big fan of, like, the, like, crossover spectacle events. I don't really even, like, watch them, to be honest with you. But um, it, it by just chance, I... Um, I was laying around, I fell asleep, and I was waiting on the Colorado uh, UCLA football game. Mm. And I just like jumped up and I saw Twitter and I saw, and then somebody said that uh, Barry and Ngano was on their way to the rings. I was like, you know what? Let me go ahead and check it out. I might as well. It's not like I'm going out my way to watch it. And I'm actually glad I did because it was a competitive fight. Yeah. But I wasn't, you know, I didn't have any expectations either way, man. I mean, but even with expectations thrown out the window, I'm pretty sure a party was just like, sure, you're just going to take care of business and get this guy, get him out of here. I thought he would because I didn't know much about Ndongo, uh, Nganu. I yeah. didn't know anything about him. I never seen him fight. I just like seeing him, um, some of the uh, promotional videos. And, you know, I saw he's a big, strong guy. But other than that, I didn't know much about him. So I, I definitely didn't think that uh, he could be that competitive with Fury. You know, literally a few days ago, I, I spoke to Malik Scott, and he was just like, um, he feels like um, Tyson Fury isn't the same. Um, those three wars with Wilder, well, really two wars with Wilder, um, changed them. You know, like, do you feel the same way, or do you think it was just, you know, he probably just wasn't taken and gone with that serious man? Sometimes, you know, when things don't turn out for you the way you thought they were or the way the public perceived that they would. Sometimes it could be multiple things. It's very rarely just one thing. Mm -hmm. And to think that Malik may have a point because I actually thought about that that night. I'm like, damn, man. Um, Fury punch resistance look a little funny. Fighting Wilder three times, man. You know, even though he won the fights, but Wilder's a vicious puncher and just being in there with him like that you know, um, they can chip away at you. He's 35. You know, he's had some out-of-the-ring issues that's been well-documented. So we may be looking at a fighter that's on the other side of his um, prom. And then when that happens is those up-and-down performances start seeping in. Sometimes you'll look like a million bucks. And then sometimes you know, people, like, scratch their head, like, damn, what's wrong with him, man? What's happening is... You're declining, but the decline usually is kind of like slow. It's not usually a thing where you're fighting and then you just can't fight no more. It's just that guys start giving you a little bit more trouble than what they normally would have. Mm. And then instead of you being, you know, excellent, you know, every fight, you know, sometimes it's the two fights and then you'll be mediocre the next fight. Good two fights, then mediocre the next fight. And then that's how the decline happens. So I'm. Um, I could definitely see that because I I thought about that. Uh, I haven't talked to Malik or anything, but I thought, I said, damn, man, you know, those are some tough fights for a while. It was knocked down four times and two out of the three fights. And just being hit by a guy that punches like that over and over again, you know, he could have left a piece of himself into that, uh, in that trilogy. Yeah, it's ironic that you say that because Malik said the, um he said the same thing. He was just like the, like everybody could see the knockdowns, but what about the punches free was just taking and just walking through? Like, those can have, like, a real damaging effect on them as well. Yep, yep, yep. I can see that. I can see that. I can see oh. that. Because they, even though Fury got the better of it, they was beating each other up. You yeah. know what I mean? Especially yeah. in the first, first and third fight, they were beating each other up. You know what I mean? It wasn't it wasn't one-way action. Yeah. We've never seen anybody take Wilder's punches like that. Mm -hmm. just to, you know what I mean? Possibility. It's definitely a possibility. I would not be surprised. Fury said something deep after the fight. He said, I got hit in the back of the head again. You know, because he claimed that Wilder hit him in the back of his head and he had like some knots on the back of his head. And mm -hmm. this time he said he got hit in the back of the head again. 
So who knows, man? You know, that's a, a good pickup by Malik because I actually thought the same thing. Would you – I know it's always tough. And, I mean, I know personally I don't really like making my – my predictions based off of like somebody's last fight because you know it's doesn't really correlate to me. But um, would you take Usyk over Fury, or you still think Fury's a little bit too big, too strong? Um, I don't know now. You know, I, I wouldn't jump the gun and act like Fury all of a sudden is not going to be able to fight because this is something that fighters don't admit. They get up for certain guys, yeah. And no matter if he says that he trained for twelve weeks. But training for 12 weeks and training intensely with the thought that the guy could possibly beat you if you're not right is two different things. Being on your P's and Q's and, 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 and just being in the gym is different. You know, so he may have trained 12 weeks, but he may not have thought that that guy would have the skill set that he did to be that competitive with him. It's two different things. So um, um, I'm not automatically going to say that Usyk can beat Fury now because of that. Usyk is totally different style. Fury's going to be up for Usyk. And you got to believe, man, after that embarrassing performance, he's going to train his ass off for Usyk. So sure. Usyk is not going to get the Fury that Ngannou fought. And anybody who believes that is just, you know, they uh they mistaken. And that when Usyk can't win, you know what I mean? But what it does mean is that he's going to get a different guy. You, you, you remember, um, I'm not sure how old you are. You remember when Holyfield... Before Holyfield fought Tyson, he had fought Bobby Chez, and he looked mm. like crap against Bobby Chez. Sure. And everybody was like, man, you know, he looked like that against Chez. He's going to look like that against um Tyson. But it don't work yep. that way. Boxing is different. <laughs> yep. It don't work that way, man. You know what I mean? Holyfield was up for Tyson. He knew Tyson was a threat. And sometimes, guys, I could I could name a lot of fights where we're supposed to be showcase fights, and guys don't look that good. And then when they fight the the you know the big fight that everybody is waiting for, they look like a million bucks. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So you gotta be careful with that. You know, I'm I'm not gonna say that Usyk is guaranteed to win. I, I I'm a big Usyk fan, and I think pound for pound he's a better fighter. But you know, um, he still got to overcome all of that size and ability. So uh, I don't know. I gotta sit down and really think about it, and you know, before I could say who was gonna win that fight. For sure. I, I actually just remembered one more recently with uh, when Oscar Valdez moved up to 130, didn't look great in, those, in a few fights, and then he ended up killing um, Miguel Burchelt. So, uh, yes, yes, yeah, that's enough. That's a good point. It happens more times than people than people realize it in boxing, man. You know, guys don't be up for certain fights and they kind of look a little mediocre. And then the next thing you know, they be in the Super Bowl fight and they look great. <laughs> Yeah. So you got you got to be careful with that. For sure, man. Um, you know, there was another thing that Malik said. I mean, me personally, I don't agree with it, but you know, Malik, he knows his boxing, so you know, he was just like, and Ganu right now could beat a lot of guys in the top fifteen to twenty. Like, do you agree with that, or um, you think that might be pushing? I don't know that? because the thing is, is that it's the element of surprise that he had versus Fury that's going to be going now. Mm -hmm. Nobody's not going to creep up on nobody else. Everybody else is going to prepare for him. And now this video out on him, now the good coaches and good fighters, they're going to be able to pick up on his tendencies. So I'm not saying he can't, but that one good night could be just one good night. You know, mm -hmm. that element that he brought to the table that night, he shocked the world. He's never going to shock the world again. You can only shock the world. Um, in that fashion, one time, as far as, like, nobody else is going to be like, oh, man, this guy can't box because he's an MMA guy. Because now they know he can box. Now they know he got heavy hands. Now they get to watch him for 10 rounds against Fury to see, um, you know, his flaws and his good points. So it's 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 not just that simple. I'm not saying I disagree with Malik, but I'm just not going to just – what what happens in boxing is that people – don't take in consideration that everybody can have their night. So what they do is when something happens that they don't expect, what they do is they start devaluing other things. I'll give you an example. Like, man, Wilder must be garbage because Andano did better with Fury than Wilder did. It doesn't work that way. You know what I'm saying? That And people make those comparisons all the time. 
but it, it's, that's not how boxing works. Yeah. So um, I believe the guy going to make it have a good – earn a great living in boxing, and he's going to definitely get some more big fights. But it's I don't have enough evidence to say who we can beat or who we can't beat right now. Gotcha. I don't know if you're get in real great shape and knock him out in the rematch. You never know, man. So it's it's hard to tell. You know, I'm looking forward to seeing him, and I was definitely surprised with his skill set and his ability to take a punch and his ability to go 10 rounds in his first fight. I was definitely – I give him props for that. I would like to see him against a few more guys before I start saying, you know, he could beat everybody, a lot of the guys in the top 10 or 15 or whatever the statement was. Gotcha.